Hey guys, Hack Tutorials, and today I bring to you the fifth episode of my series How to Make an SPRX Menu uh, for MW3. Uh, so in today's video, we're actually going to be adding the scrolling to our menu, um, and a little bit more. So uh, let's hop right in. First thing I want to point out is I found out that you can use Visual Studio 2013 or 2015 to make SPRX projects. You actually have to make the project on 2010, so you still have to have that installed, but you can actually open them and work on them and build them in 2013 or 2015. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and I'll leave a link in the description to the Nexion update uh, thread that shows you how to do that. Uh, because you need to do one really small thing and then you can do it. And I like 2013 a lot more than 2010. It's a lot more uh, user friendly. Um, Alright, so let's jump right in. First thing we're going to do is uh, go into the main thread, the for loop. Um, and this is something you've probably noticed. The game takes a little bit longer to load up. So when you click on MW3, it kind of black screens for maybe 15 seconds. Um, and it's pretty annoying. So how to fix that, all you have to do is before the for loop, just go ahead and put a sleep for 20 seconds. So write sleep, and then the parameter write 20,000, because you have to remember that it's in milliseconds. And basically what this does is, instead of having this for loop, which has all these um, conditions in it, uh, instead of having this run right away, it actually sleeps for 20 seconds and lets the game actually load. Um, that's basically what it does, and this fixes the problem. So now on to the scrolling. Um, in the previous video I asked whether you guys wanted an actual scroller or highlighted text, and pretty much everyone said scroller, but I will be doing basically a combination of both. I'll have a scroller, but also when it scrolls the text will become slightly bigger. Um, and I'll also show you how to add glow to the text if you want to. Uh, but yeah, it's basically just going to be a scroller with text that uh, enlarges when you're hovering over it. So the first thing you want to do is in our uh, namespace, go ahead and write game underscore HUD LM underscore S pointer, and you can call it scroller. Um, and you could put 18 for the clients. Okay, uh, and then here, we're going to be doing something similar to the background, right, scroller client equals set text, no, not set text, set shader, client one. For the width, it should be the same width as the background, so 200. For the height, it should uh, it should be like 20 about that's what I found was good because I tested things before this video so for the float X it should be the same as the background uh, which well for now that is actually 900 which is off the screen but it will be the same as the background for the float Y uh, it's gonna start out um, hovering over the first option so I found that, that was 131 for the align you don't need anything so just put zero and for the RGB and A, it should be the exact same as the glow of the title of the menu, which is cyan blue. So you can paste those, make sure you have all four, and that should be good. Next, move, on, move down to the run menu, and type move over time. Put scroller, because that's what we're moving, client. For the time that it takes to get onto the screen, 200 as always. Uh, for the float X, um, it should be the same as the background as I mentioned earlier, so 500, as you can see 500 right here. And the Y should be the same as it was, so 131. Okay, and then for the delete HUDs, you could actually just copy and paste this and replace 500 with 900. Alright, so now we have a scroller that's part of our menu. Um, and what we're going to do now is actually make it scroll up and down. First thing we're going to want to do is add a couple variables to our functions. And I've already done that before this video. Uh, just make an int scroll uh, as an array of 18, and then a max scroll as an array of 18 as well for the clients. Um, and the scroll is just going to get the current scroll that you're on, and then the max scroll is the maximum amount you could scroll down the menu, which is based off of how many options there are. Uh, first thing we're going to do is up here, we're actually going to be making a function 
for everything we want to sort of load before the menu is loaded, including store HUDs. I'm gonna call this function void menu constructor and put in client in here. And it's called constructor based on, well, what a constructor is in object-oriented programming. If you don't know what it is, then I don't know, I guess the name doesn't mean anything to you, but it kind of does make sense. So the first thing we want to do is actually store the HUDs, so you can put that in here. We also want to make sure that this scroll, the variable you just made, is equal to zero. I don't know why I put i here, it should be client. I just pasted it, that's why. Okay, so the scroll should always start off being zero on the zeroth option whenever you open the menu, um, or at least when it's, when it's like loaded. And then for the max scroll, it should be the amount of options you have in your first submenu. Uh, or in the, I guess just the main, like whenever you open the menu. So that for us will be nine, because it's 10 options, zero through nine um, is the 10 options. And then right here you can remove store HUDs and just put menu constructor and put I right here. And I would actually name this inline void uh, because in, in case you don't know what that does, it kind of just pastes the code wherever you want to. And we're kind of not using this anywhere else besides here and it's not a whole lot of code so it would make, it would make sense to put inline. However, uh, SPRX menus or these PPU threads and stuff with the PS3, they're kind of, the library is written by Sony, all of these, the whole SDK is kind of poorly written, and there's a lot of options you're limited to, and I'm really not sure if inline actually is going to be, is going to work properly. I know that you can't really use classes, and you can't really use like STD strings, so I'm not going to mess around with that. <clears throat> so I'd, re I'd rather just keep it like this instead of trying to optimize it, um, and it should be fine. So yeah, now you have menu constructor in here, which will call, which will do all three of these things uh, in the start of the game. Uh, and then next, we need we need a function that will update the scroll. Basically, whenever you click up or down, the scroll will have to be updated somehow. So I'll call it void update scroll. I'll pass in the int client and also the scroll, which we could just use scroll all the time throughout this function, but I'd rather not. I don't know, it's, it makes things a little bit uh, messier and more confusing, so I'd rather just pass it into the function. And I would do it by reference, but for more efficiency, but again, doing this, I don't know if this is really uh, well supported, I'm pretty sure. My menu froze last time I tried to do that, unfortunately. So, yeah, I'll just pass it in. Um, and before we actually add anything to it, let's actually go and do a little bit of a logic for our up and down buttons. So when we click up, essentially what we want to happen is for the scroll to decrease. Uh, because you have to think about scroll in relationship to the zeroth scroll. So if you are, uh, if your scroll is 5 as an example and you click up, you actually want the scroll to be 4 or closer to 0, closer to the zeroth uh, option. Um, and a lot of things that I'm going to try and explain in this video are really hard to explain. Uh, but I'll try my best to do so. So what we're going to do is just write scroll i minus minus when they click up, which basically just decrements the scroll by one. And then we're going to make a condition here, checking if the scroll is less than the zeroth scroll, which doesn't make any sense, it can't be less than zero. So if scroll i is less than zero, so if you scroll all the way up and above that the, the first option, um, then it's actually going to reset and go to the last option. So in order to do that, I'll just write scroll i equals max scroll i. And you'll see what this does, uh, basically. And then after this, after all this happens, we want to update the scroll. And pass in i for the client and scroll i for the scroll. So all of this happens when they click up and then it gets put in effect by the update scroll function which we haven't really done anything with yet. Uh, so then with the down it's going to be ba just basically the opposite of what we wrote here. It's basically just going to be the opposite of, we wrote, of what we wrote here. So we're going to write scroll i plus plus 
and we're going to check for a similar condition, checking if it's actually uh, above the max scroll, which is kind of like the opposite. So if scroll i is greater than the max scroll, which it shouldn't ever be, then it resets the scroll to zero. Scroll i equals zero. And then again, we want to update the scroll and pass in i for the client and scroll i for the scroll. Now we can go back to the HUDs and all we have to do that's left is actually just fill in this function. First thing we're going to do is put a for loop which will iterate through each scroll. So for int i equals zero, i is less than max scroll, uh, client, this actually should be less than or equal to plus plus i. And this stuff is going to be extremely difficult to explain for me, so I'll try as far as I can. But otherwise, it's really up to you to really think about what all this code does. Um, also, I wrote this a few months ago, so I don't re exactly remember the complete purpose of everything. Uh, but yeah, so first we're going to be writing if i equals scroll. Actually, no, first i doesn't equal scroll and then else. So in this else statement, this is basically the this one. So this else statement is the option that you're currently hovering over, and this is all the other options. So let's start with else. We're going to move the scroller. So over time, scroller, client. Uh, for the time, we'll put 185. I'll be using that for everything here. For float x, it should be the same as before. And for the Y, uh, this is what's going to be changing. Um, so I'll go and put 131, which is the original Y, which is like where it starts. Um, and then do plus scroll times 25, uh, which is basically like based on what the current scroll is. That's how that's the position of the of the scroller. And this is kind of hard to explain for me, but yeah, so just put that down. Uh, then also, this is where we're going to start um, changing the size of the options, of the font of the options. So write font scale over time and put options client i. For the size, put 0 0.67, which is 0 0.2, larger than the regular one. For the time, put 185. And then put sleep 35. I've tested all this before I made this video, so that's how I know exactly what I want everything to be. Um, also, just so you don't forget, put sleep 185 here as well, which prevents the, uh, the, the scroll from going absolutely ham. So right here. And this is where it gets extremely hard for me to explain, so just bear with me. Uh, font scale over time. Put options client. And then put scroll minus 1. And then for the font size, 0 0.65, which is the normal one. And remember, this if statement is considering all of the options besides the one that you're currently currently hovering over. And for the time, I'll put 185. And this just basically resets the option right before the option you're hovering over to the regular size. Then copy and paste this whole thing. And it'll do the same exact thing for the option after the current option you're hovering over. Um, and then we're gonna have, we're gonna have to account for the the zeroth option and the max scroll option, the last option. Um, so just write if scroll equals equals zero font scale over time options client max scroll client. Make sure you have. The client within here, it's like brackets within brackets, but it works. Um, then for the float size, 0 0.65. And then for the time, put 185. And then here we're going to put kind of just the inverse of this, or the opposite. If scroll 
equals max scroll client font scale over time options client zero the zeroth option set to the regular size 0 0.65 and 185 for the time okay uh, that looks pretty good all right so the next thing we're going to do is go into the for loop go inside the if the square is pressed block and um, right after delete huds set the scroll back equal to zero so scroll i equals zero and then also we're going to want to do two more things reset all the options to the regular font size besides the first option so write for int i equals zero i is less than 10 for all the options plus plus i I actually can't do that because we're inside a for loop with i, so I'll make this j options i j and then put the arrow and then put lm dot font scale equals 0 0.65 which is resets them all to 0.65 and then you want to do something very similar to the first option options i zero then put the arrow lm dot font scale equals 0 0.67 so the next time you open the menu the scroll starts out at zero um, and then all of the options besides the first one are regular size and the first one is a little bit bigger because you always start off on the first one so now we can do Control Shift B to build. Um, if you're still using Visual Studio 2010, uh, obviously do uh, F7 to build. But with 2013 or 2015, you do Control Shift B. Um, now you can go ahead and put this onto your PS3. Just drag this into your TMP folder, and good. I'm going to go into the game, and I'll be back when it is uh, up and started. All right, so now I'm in the game. And if you just go ahead and open the menu, you can see we got the scroller. The first option is nice and big. And if we go ahead and scroll down, you can see that it all works. As you can see, if we go all to the if we go all the way to the bottom and past, then it actually goes back to the top. Same with if you scroll up from the top. Um, and then if you close the menu, it resets the scroll back to zero. And the only big option is the first one. Everything else is normal sized. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, I hope this video is helpful and thanks for watching.